everyone. Greetings from Malaysia. Glad to be with you, even though it's virtual. We are with a global chapter with the global CFF celebrating the World CFFD of 2021. Now, uh, Malaysia is a chapter that has been uh, launched since uh, 25th of October 2013. And of course, we have uh, now we are going along with so many activities, and that's why our topic for the today's uh, seminar is Cavity Free Generation Malaysia and End Game. How are we going to reach the end game? So, we are going to use our strength by uniting to stop these cavities and fighting for a healthier future in slightly, perhaps, a little bit different from where with other people. Let's see what we have for you. Uh, we, there will be two presentations here, part with me and of course my co-chair, uh, Professor Tuti Ningse Muhammad Dom, who will then continue and see in the future what we are going to do as well. All of us are very much aware, right? 90-100% adults and 60-80% to of children worldwide are having dental decay. And we are no exception. In Southeast Asia, where Malaysia is located, we have 87% of the population who have caries. And that's not something to be proud of. Yeah, so if you look at the National Epidemiological Surveys, in particular of uh, the, what you call this, this uh, younger age group, the toddlers, five and to six years old, we can see that caries is practically more than 90%, although it has gone down in the last survey of 2017 uh, to 76%, but we are still having a lot of teeth that are being decayed among the 20 deciduous teeth. This is the picture that we are not proud of. As you know very well, primary uh, decay uh, among the deciduous teeth can end up with having no teeth. And you know, ours is even before the age of 50. Why? What's the reason? We all love sweets. You know, the public's number one enemy is sweets for dental decay. Okay, and we can see this picture all over in developing countries, inclusive of Malaysia, sweet street peddling. It's still there, it's still common. Well, with a uh, uh, what to call it with development, we are now seeing more and more of hidden sugar. We are all wanting to be a civilized society. We want to go for modernization. So what's the consequence? The consequence is you have sugar hiding in all the foods that we are not aware, but we are now making and promoting to ensure that our community are aware of these things. Yeah, and you can see here the picture. This is a typical eating day for Malaysians or for any Asian for that matter in our region. It is our culture. We love food. And so we have six times in a day we eat. And it becomes a horror to all the processes of trying to reduce decay in this region. That's one of the reasons why we are having high prevalence of dental caries among the population or not only in Malaysia but in Southeast Asia. Yeah, not only are we uh, making a problem, making it a problem uh, with dental caries, but we are actually contributing to the NCD problem of obesity as well as diabetes, which is also highly prevalent in most parts of the region in this country, inclusive of Malaysia. People don't brush their teeth after that. So we have a lot of plaque accumulation. And what happened is we're not going to help with the stiffened curve. We all know what stiffened curve is, isn't it? Yeah, we are not going to try to be able to control the stiffened curve, which says it goes down, it goes down, it goes down all the time. And so we don't have time for acid to be neutralized. Okay, and uh, so you can see that, you know, the effect of caries is not only to the individuals, but it has a long-term consequences yeah, for the nation, for the population, for the world. And of course, at the macro level, in particular with the country, it affects the burden of illness, 
It affects the manpower distribution, and we only have 11,000 dentists in Malaysia, you know, and uh, for 32 million population, and 40% uh, of which are children below the age of 20. So you can imagine how much work we have to do. And of course, the worst part of it is we need to keep the mental health, the physical health of our professional. As a global chapter, we also have our own goals because it has to be something that we can achieve. And we are saying that by 2017, 70% of the schools and the dental associations in Malaysia should have embraced and promoted the, the caries process as a continuum. And we have achieved that. And by 2020, we hope uh, the regional members uh, of the Alliance would have uh, done the integration part locally, you know, doing anything that is global in thinking, but local in action. And then we hope for every child born in Malaysia in 2026, they will stay cavity free during their lifetime, alongside with the global chapter's vision. So we started, nothing can be done if you are just one person. But if you work in a team, then everything is possible. So we, I initiate this with a group of DPH, dental public health specialists, uh, who have the like minds. It's easier to work with everyone with the same focus. And we have two, four, six, seven of us. One, the last one is of course an oral biologist, but she becomes our secretary and we move on uh, to work towards the uh, Cavity Free Future Malaysian Generation the End Game. And one of the, the few things that we have agreed upon when we started this work is to make sure that number one, we do not duplicate the work of what has been done by the Ministry of Health. Number two, we have no seed money. Nobody is giving us any money. We have to think of how best uh, to deliver our goods. So we decided it's going to work on a win-win situation all the time. And so our strength probably would be to work in partnership, in collaboration with our stakeholders. And so we work with this, starting off with these people, the Malaysian Association of Dental Public Health Specialists, MADPIS, this is a group, and the biggest group of dental specialists in Malaysia. We have the Oral Health Division, Ministry of Health supporting us as well in our work and we supporting them in turn. We have the Malaysian Dental Deans Council because we have to teach every dental student the use of ICDAS and ICMS as a new mode of measurement and treatment. And the Malaysian Dental Association, what can they contribute in the private sector? And, uh, and we work with another stakeholder beyond uh, dentistry, that is the UKM, University of Bangsa and Malaysia Medical Centre, and not least, the Malaysian Dental Training College of Penang, which uh, trains all our auxiliaries. And we sign. We sign all the MOUs with all of them except the last one. Now, I'm going to share with you some of the activities that we have been doing since 2013. And the first one that we do, actually, is to work with the Dean's Council. And we have the pre-formal launching of the AC Before the, we have the ACFFM series, we already started having a consultant from overseas, even Professor Nigel Pitt, who gives us TOT to our uh, academics in University of Malaya. And we have 13 schools by that time. So we were all represented and attended. So our scoreboard, as you can see, by the year 2017, every school has already practiced ICDAS, ICCMS. Now, to make sure that we are uh, empowering and enhancing the work that we have been doing with the Dental Dean Council, we take every opportunity to, to bring in any one that Professor Nigel Peer or the global partner uh, brings along the way and uh, to have more and more of the work being done. And uh, we also extend help to the government dentists because no point teaching the students alone and then what and when they graduate, where are they? If you have two different things going on, the government is doing it and on a different measurement and we are doing a different measurement. So no, we thought of one voice. We thought in one voice and so we also provided help extended help through the association Met Peace and also through uh, to the Ministry of Health, Oral Health Division to train 
their dentists and auxiliaries as well. And of course, uh, we do also do and provide uh, workshops. Uh, we come up with something easy, you know, something that people for the private sector in particular. So we were thinking, perhaps, you know, we need to attract them differently. If they are going, we are going to encourage them to use ICDAS as the measurement for dental caries cavities. And so we came up with this innovation. And uh, and more and more, we also do a lot more of uh, oral health promotion with different uh, partners. This is Professor Wolf from New York uh, to give us also enhancement of the ICDAS caries management. Right, and not only that, but we also support other dental profession organizations, uh, not only the MedPeace, but the Malaysian Association of Pediatric Dentists the dental therapies to enhance the use of ICDAS and the management. And we have to tell you, if not for our partner, industry partner, Colgate, we will not be able to do all of this. So we thank them from the bottom of, the, from the bottom of our heart. Next is we, want, we need to have a generation. We can't just stop to what we are doing today. We need to have uh, people who are going to move forward, nurturing and for sustainability. So we nurture future dental leaders. Who are they? Obviously, the dental students in the different universities of Malaysia. And so, and uh, alongside with that, we also introduced this program where we have the ACFF Dental Leadership for Young Dental Leaders uh, working at the university hospital. Uh, among the patients, let's see what they can do with oral health promotion in the hospital. So we do it with the UKM Medical Center, which is uh, uh, officially, uh, we have the official, we make sure that it is everything is official, okay? We have that rep and I, I open up uh, and we have the five, and instead we open up to 10 graduates, but unfortunately only five volunteers to come in and this is what they have been doing. You can see all the pictures here. They have been doing screening, caries management, uh, giving oral health promotion uh, in all the oncology ward for the young patients, prenatal clinic and in all for the only for a session of six weeks. They have managed to uh, come up and do at least 370 cases as a trial. So, and also not to say I have that, we have taken this uh, initiative forward and put it in the curriculum for the younger school, uh, Lincoln University College, which uh, to, to include that oral health screening as part of the human disease uh, clinical experience at the hospital in Kelantan, in Kota Baru. Okay, so you can see here all the interns, they are very proud and we have then turned them into uh, mentors and again we also do this much you know trying to encourage universities to have their own resource uh, oral health education resource and with the help of Colgate uh, who will replenish the resources it's a win-win situation they provide the furniture the cupboards and uh, uh, we have the agreement of Colgate filling it up with all the samples in the world the samples that they have and this is being used for individual patients and the dental chair as well as for the uh, community projects that they are required to do. And so we are fulfilled by doing that, we have fulfilled the health promotion concept, uh, empowering students, making health education uh, an easier choice and of course working outside the box of dentistry in the community. Uh, we take every opportunity to engage with the media and uh, promoting public health uh, awareness on early caries management and the need for prevention. So I go all out in television, in uh, radios, everything else. We also come up with scientific publication with the help of Colgate uh, uh, to, to distribute to all our private practitioners in particular. And of course, we need to add, we are all public health people uh, and we are specialists in water preservation. So we help the, our states that have problems with this, with the policy makers. And also, not only do we do that, but we also continue with the roadshow that we've been uh, doing since 2013. 
to continue uh, uh, reaching out to the rural folks, you know, in Sarawak. We we come along with the oral health division in that program, and of course we also encourage the pharmacies, the two giant uh, pharmaceutical companies here, Giant and Guardian Pharmacy, and we do the oral health promotion program with them on invitation. And of course, we did not. We also continue with the, in 2018. One of the activities that we closed the year with was to provide oral health promotion and screening program for the 1,000 urban poor children in Kuala Lumpur. Not to forget the old people as well. I'm getting there too. So we make sure that they have healthy life, have healthy lifestyle, healthy teeth. And if no teeth, provide them with the teeth. So we have the symposium uh, for all, for open to all, not only for the dental fraternity. And for doing all that, we were honored with uh, the Gold Champion Award in the category of Innovation and Creativity in 2018. Thank you very much to the ACF Global and the judges for giving us a boost. And more contributions, you can see here. Uh, during the 10th Asian Conference of Oral Health Promotion for School Children 2021 20, uh, uh, on 2021 September 2019, we also uh, move our vision and vision towards uh, providing care for the uh, children in the future. Now let's go and share with you what we have been doing with the celebration of uh, previously of WFF. WCFFD. Okay, the first one we, although the global one starts in 2016, we only did ours, the first one, inaugural one in 2017. And we give the honor to the Penang Dental Training School, which is the backbone of our implemented dental care program for all the school children in Malaysia. This is under the Ministry of Health. And it was it was highlighted even in Dental Asia. It was uh, the inaugural one, and we are very proud of it. The next one that we have was in 2018, which we then worked on with one of the states, you know, the then oral health division of the state of uh, Negeri Sembilan. Uh, fortunately, the 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 director of the state at that time is one of our. Uh, member of the uh, task force, that is Dr. Sharul Lai Suja, and we did it with them. And these are some of the key event highlights that we have done with them. You can see that, wow, oh, you can see Professor Nigel Pitt again of five minutes, yeah, opening speech, and then we have all the drills and the media coming in, etc. We also have media coverage. Uh, we don't stop just doing it among ourselves, you know, we do it with all the newspapers coming in and uh, introducing and telling everybody. And also the social media. So social media is not just all bad, it can be used for the goodness of the cause. The, the last one that we did before lockdown, <laughs> unfortunately before lockdown, we did was in Tengano, the, off the, the coast, of the east coast of Malaysia, Peninsula of Malaysia facing the South China Sea and a beautiful state. Do come over and stay in Tengganu and uh, you'll find uh, it is a very nice place to come to. And we have it and we are the principal director of the oral health division was our guest of honor and he launched uh, the celebration for 2019. At this celebration, we introduce the young volunteers, ACFF Dental Youth Volunteers. Every member of the dental uh, of, uh, school, the students can, uh, to, can be a member, a volunteer to our program. And they can join us in, in this kind of program that we may have in the future. This, this is one of the things that we work with the armed forces. It's not so easy to work with them, but we got the opportunity and two of three of our graduates now are so impressed with the armed forces that they have joined the medical dental corps there. And so uh, we also have 
uh, work with the help of our uh, director of the oral health division of Tengganu at that time, Dr. Kamari Asuman, we also have the opportunity to work with the schools, secondary school. So the natural chapter here will remain to declare that we work in collaboration because we believe in working together for a noble cause towards achieving a cavity-free future, mission generating, that's the way to go. So now I'm done with my part and to share with what we have, the initiative that we've been doing since we started. Now I think I will leave this to my partner here, our co-chair, with, with uh, uh, Professor Dr. Tuti Ningsi Muhammad Dong. Uh, she will share with you what are our mission and our vision as we move forward. We act on sustainability of our uh, ACFM, uh, ACFF Malaysian chapter. So, uh, over to you, Prof. Tuti. Uh, hello, um, I'll be following up from what Professor Rahima has left. And I'll be talking to you uh, about what um, how we expect to go forward uh, from now on. As you can see, um, ACFF Malaysia uh, has been um, able to conduct a lot of activities uh, since our inception. And this would not have been possible if we had not had the um, collaboration with all the stakeholders in terms of resources, in terms of manpower, uh, in terms of uh, the various platforms that we had used. So in order to move forward, we definitely have to plan for how we are going to sustain all these activities. We have no budget, uh, we have no money, um, and we have very few people uh, in the task force. So what, we'll, what we plan to do uh, at this point in time is to register ACFF Malaysia as an official, non-profit, non-government organisation. In doing so, we hope to be able to sustain our activities so that we are able to, to meet and achieve the vision and mission of ACFF. Um, and when we have an NGO, we are able to have a structured organisation to facilitate the execution of the activities. The idea of having volunteers to come forward and register is something uh, that we wish uh, to pursue. In trying to achieve a cavity-free future um, and cavity-free generation, we actually have um, our tools like um, having minimal intervention, um, the uh, modules, we have the equipment and all the materials. Uh, but what is the use of all these uh, tools if we are not able as dentists to get these tools across to the population? So in the ACF at Malaysia, uh, we feel that a training of leaders in dentistry is very important. So we have uh, in our vision to actually strengthen our leadership training program so that uh, dentists uh, who are in the um, system, uh, who are already working, will be able to um, learn more about how to engage with stakeholders, how to advocate and position our agenda um, beyond um, the dental fraternity itself. So ACFF Malaysia is all about um, looking at the resources that we have. We are all about complementing the already uh, the system, the healthcare delivery system that is already in place. The main actors are the Ministry of Health, uh, the Ministry of Higher Education, Ministry of uh, Defence, and one of our main resources is the young dentists. The young dentists who have uh, just graduated from the dental schools, for, um, for many years now, uh, we, we experience uh, having to make the dentists, um, the dentists, this new dentist, take some time until they are 
um, they are they get into the health health system itself. So during this waiting period, um, we advocate having an internship program, uh, which means we call again for the volunteers uh, where they can actually be engaged and be placed uh, in uh, hospitals or in training centres that are accommodating uh, that would like to accommodate this program. So these young interns will actually um, be exposed to how they would be able to um, engage yeah, um, non-dentists um, to also uh, learn about um, what it means for caries prevention. Um, working in um, an environment like a hospital, um, a children's hospital or children's ward, um, can give the opportunity, these young dentists, an opportunity um, to also be involved uh, with the real uh, patients in the wards. Furthermore, this internship program could also be done for dental students uh, themselves uh, as an elective. Um, it is something that can be pursued and improved upon from what we have been doing uh, thus far. We will continue to uh, conduct community oral health promotion uh, and activities, uh, especially for communities that are vulnerable um, or marginalised uh, populations. Um, because they are not in the, uh, within the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Health. Uh, we would look into um, migrant uh, population um, as well as um, the homeless population because they are not uh, covered by the Ministry of Health. For us to move ahead and to do all these um, planned activities um, we already have our current stakeholders um, or collaborators uh, such as the Malaysian Dental Association, Ministry of Health, Malaysian Association of Dental Public Health, Public Health Specialists. But we would like to um, explore yeah, other um, agencies or other organisations and we have already uh, started uh, to engage uh, more of these stakeholders. Uh, one such um, organisation is um, the Malaysian Health Coalition. The Malaysian Health Coalition uh, is a group um, of um, health-related uh, professional associations. I think today uh, there are something like 45 um, professional associations, pharmacies, public health doctors, and they're all in one uh, coalition uh, that are united uh, to put health as an agenda uh, which, which cannot be politicised. So uh, ACFF is already uh, one of the members of MHC right now. We have also talked to um, Malaysian Association of Pediatric Dentistry uh, because we believe the younger um, we can start um, the preventive activities, then it is better. It is more likely that we can meet um, our goals of cavity-free future. One such organisation is the Malaysian Breastfeeding Association, um, in which we could liaise and um, position um, our, our, our agenda uh, to, to meet um, the needs of the breastfeeding mother and as well as the child. Um, so another possible uh, engagement uh, would be with uh, doctors, primary care physicians or the family medicine um, specialists uh, because we know that sometimes um, when people have uh, dental problems or problems related to their mouth, they're, they're not sure whether they should get a, they go, they should go to see a dentist. Um, and sometimes they don't go, they don't see a dentist, but they would go to the health clinic um, to get consultation. So by enlightening our uh, doctors on 
identifying um, early dental um, caries lesions or by helping, being able to advise um, patients to get a referral to the dentist will actually help us um, move ahead our agenda for a cavity-free generation. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the year 2020 was a quiet year for us in ACFF Malaysia. But it doesn't mean that we were not doing much or we were not thinking of um, the cavity-free uh, future. We were actually planning for uh, that these activities that we could do. So to take off uh, 2021 uh, and also in um, celebration for the uh, World Caries Free Future Day, uh, we have actually planned a couple of activities. So the first activity is um, having a social media campaign competition uh, with the theme of uh, cavity free future for the Malaysians. So we have um, already taken off uh, with this uh, campaign and on the 13th of October we will have the winner. We will be able to announce the winner of this social media competition. The competition is open uh, to all the dental fraternities. So we have two categories. One category is for the dental student or the dental uh, therapist uh, trainees. And the other category is for the dental practitioners who are dentists or dental therapists who are already in the service. The second activity is we'll be having a virtual symposium um, on the 13th of October. And uh, in this symposium, we have invited um, all the original stakeholders of ACFF uh, Malaysia uh, to speak on what we have achieved uh, in terms of uh, a cavity-free future. So we have invited the Principal Director of the Oral Health Programme, Ministry of Health. Um, we have invited the Chairperson of the Malaysian Dental Beans Council, the President of the Malaysian Dental Association, as well as the President of the Malaysian Association of Dental Public Health Specialists. So this virtual symposium is open to all and we are happy to invite everyone to tune in uh, to this uh, program. Uh, we will be also be um, uh, having a live session from our Facebook as well as YouTube. So please come and join us. Uh, and we hope that this October, um, where we are celebrating our World Caries Free Future Day, is a good start for the years to come, so that we are able to meet our goals. So that's all from me. Thank you very much.